First, I'm going to uh, give a little introduction about my work. And um, that has a lot to do with robots, um, because I get named a lot for making um, robotic fashion, which you can see here a little bit. What I like to do is um, yeah, not create normal fashion. I, 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 yeah, I did it for a long time. I started with fashion design when I was 14, and I got on the way really bored. And uh, yeah, I don't know. It was not really my thing. And then in 2006, I think, I discovered robots. And then I had the idea of like, okay, what about combining my study with some other cool stuff uh, to get interest back? So I started to, um, uh, to study interaction design and um, yeah, user experience design and uh, yeah, learn myself to, uh, to do some um, yeah, technical engineering, electronical engineering and stuff. And so that brought me at that time uh, to an, um, a microcontroller called an Arduino open source uh, platform developed by, um, by some crazy guys from uh, Italy and I found out that they gave uh, classes in Sweden. Uh, so in 2007 I, I moved to Sweden for a while during my study and uh, yeah, to explore this some more and what I could do with it. So that was my, my ID at that time from it. And uh, yeah, from, from that on you, you, yeah, you start to develop your own hardware to it. Uh, to explain a little bit in, in, in short, um, yeah, it's, it's, not, yeah, it's not normal fashion what I make, uh, although it looks like it's here because you don't see the interaction. And interaction is uh, uh, yeah, the most important part uh, of my work. Going to leave the music off. This is uh, IntuC, for example, it's a project based on eFoil and it switches in transparency as soon as you put a voltage on there. And uh, what is interesting is that this material is normally used for yeah, security glass, um, so it's mixed in into these big sheets of, uh, of plastic. And um, yeah, what these companies they are developing this material and uh, they want to make it really stable. And then, yeah, some crazy interaction designers and fashion designers get their minds together and, yeah, want to have it, yeah, everything but stable because we want to have it flexible to put it on the body. So uh, that was a really, this was a really interesting exploration in uh, 2010 and 2011 for Studio Roosgaarde to, uh, yeah, explore what you can do with um, with this, yeah, material by yeah, placing it on the body and. Um, yeah, creating an interaction with the model. It's, um, it's connected to the heartbeat of the model, so as soon as she gets more uh, excited or aroused, um, then yeah, it starts also to twitch more like a an, an heartbeat does. So it's, um, yeah, it's bouncing and uh, yeah, the, the more the, yeah, the model, her emotions um, are triggered, the more the materi material is reacting. So that's really a cool um, yeah, exploration for the inner body. So from the, the design going in uh, with the system to the, uh, to the monitoring of the body and uh, yeah, getting data from there to do things with it. These are the, the different states of the foil, so electrocuted and uh, not. <laughs> And these are uh, different states of the dress. For example, this was prototyped in 2009. So this is not Photoshop. These are the, the, the real states of it. That's uh, the working of the material. And little test that I did. So to make it, yeah, to make it look more fragile, to make it, uh, to make it switch. It was really interesting to see uh, how, yeah, the more you cut the material, the the, the less, um, yeah, the, the more fragile it became. The more interesting, but also, yeah, harder to work with, uh, regarding to, uh, yeah, letting the currency flow of the material. So also, yeah, doing some tests with bending and then creating the final design. And I got a little thing from YouTube that is uh, showing the, the effect of the material when you electrocute it and when not. So when you let the currency flow over the, over the material. So it's really, uh, yeah, it's cool. Cool stuff. So that's more an exploration that goes into the body, like measuring the heartbeats and see what you can do uh, with that. And then um, 
Uh, this is a um, yeah, project that started um, uh, at a festival that Magnus was telling about, Robux Otica. I, um, uh, I was doing an artist in residency in, in, in Vienna at that time, it was two years ago. And um, yeah, I heard from the festival and I was there with, uh, with um, yeah, two ar fellow artists who later became my collaborators, uh, Jane Tingley from Canada and uh, Mary Skintel. Um, he was at that time living in Vienna. He's originally from uh, from uh, Norway. He's a hacker and tinkler. And um, yeah, so we, we we heard about his festival, and it's yeah, it's um, uh, it's pulled us to our imagination what you could do with it. At that time, I was busy with a system based on valves and liquids and uh, elastomer pumps. And uh, yeah, somehow it all got together, and um, yeah, we got invited for Robux to uh, yeah to to make something for that. So what we created was a cocktail making robot dress, and it's called the Dare Droid. Uh, what you can see here on the picture, uh, she is wearing a necklace uh, with sensors in there. We used at the time infrared sensors to have uh, yeah a good um, good idea about the um, the location of the of the people. We built it all around. Um, and um, a more boxy situation, we want, we want to create this really robotic curl, so yeah, the more boxy look uh, um, is, yeah, is visualized there. Um, the, um, the design has, um, has different states, it works on the, um, the uh, privacy settings of uh, the personal space ID and theory of Edward T. Hall. Um, so he defines uh, personal space in, in a different differentiation. So you have your uh, intimate space, which would be uh, nearby. Then you have your, um, your personal space, which is, I think, 45 centimeters to uh, one, meter, uh, one meter 20. Uh, then you have your social space and then you have the surroundings. So you have, um, you can say, 45 centimeters, one meter, two meter, three meter. Of course, it's the, the exact measurements here uh, in the system. So uh, the system sees when you're approaching. So it measures when you're approaching. Uh, in the later version, then lights also blink according to the position that you are and the way you approach the model. Uh, so as soon as you're in your personal space, then the model's asking you um, uh, if you would like a drink, because of course, it's a cocktail making a robot um, a festival. So yeah, we need to give the fist or something. Um, and of course you say yes, because you want to have a drink from her. And then she's saying, then she's asking you, um, if you want a drink, you have to play a game with me. Uh, she has, um, at that time, and, uh, and we, yeah, we just used an Android with a tutor there, came on there, uh, to just trigger, yeah, trigger some, something in social movements in, in, in this festival to yeah, get people to react and to interact with the model. So uh, yeah, the questions were like from bark like a dog to stand on your hands and to uh, um, yeah, um, uh, yeah, a lot of questions there were in there. I think we programmed around 60 and we had really much fun the evening before while programming those. Um, and the funny thing is that most people took the there are questions over the truth, but I think that's, that's always, and that's why it always also was called the Dare Droid. Um, so if you play the game and you play it well, then uh, you get a shot uh, dispensed through the system. Um, these were some sketches that we made for it, um, how the interaction would be. Here you see the system, uh, you see on the back um, it's, a, it's a microcontroller. Um, at that time we used an Arduino for prototyping, later on we made um, 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 a board setting for it from a microcontroller uh, setting that uh, from a PCB board that I developed for another project, and um, she has elastomer pumps at, at her both uh, hips. Those are uh, yeah pumps that instead of having an infuse uh, infuse you work with gravity. These pumps are yeah pushing the alcohol um, closer together, and I, I, I used valves for this, uh, so uh, solenoid valves. So uh, as the, the alcohol got pushed to the through the system, the, um, yeah I could control the, the the valves. So we opened the valves and then the, um, the drink got dispensed. Unless the model was not agreeing with you doing your question correct, then you didn't cut a drink at all, or you cut only the lemon. So um, I think here we used cranberry juice and um, cranberry juice and vodka to make the more the, the red the red drink. Uh, later we used gin and tonic and used uh, an ultraviolet uh, lamp, so it also lightens up. So uh, this was the yeah this was the prototype. This was the dress in uh, in action, and uh, we got the um, the award for the best interaction from that evening. So it's still standing in our studios.
and it, it goes around actually every year it's, it goes to the next person so as soon as some, some of the guys are yeah, in Europe or I'm in Canada then we give it to each other and this was a little movie of the, of the prototype in action with Bernard and Bernard was the, was the guy who made the B52 uh, cocktail maker with the peristaltic pumps so then you also know that artist and um, it made it made a lot of people smile there. <laughs> and that's Ryan. Huh? That's Ryan. Oh, that's Ryan. Yeah, yeah. Shit. Yeah, and then it's so great. Yeah. From but Colorado. he's also great. Yeah. Hmm. I think Oregon. <laughs> he also presented him. Oh, I thought it was Bernard. Yeah. But yeah, Matt on the background. <laughs> yeah. So from there on, we got invited to um, to Montreal because they 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 yeah they liked uh, the project, and then we said like yeah, but yeah, the, the Dardroid first version is really for Robux It's it's the boxy version, and uh, yeah, and a lot of inspiration goes into also the, the the festival. So we didn't want to show this um, this dress. Uh, so we want to make an, 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 an a dress that is more based in uh, yeah on. on on that festival to make it more uh, unique. Mm. So by, with Canada, we were thinking of making it more organic. So we 3D printed the fronts and we made some adjustments. Uh, the system is pretty much the same, except for some tweaks that we did regarding to the sensors and other placements, because that's cool. Like if you're, yeah, that's that's what I don't agree. If you're creating fashion, you create fashion for uh, whatever, uh, yeah, for one collection. So you work on it for half a year and then you show it once and then yeah, it dissolves and it's gone, sort of, it's, it feels empty to me and working on these projects is cool because you have a prototype and then it grows like a little child, sort of, you, you, you put uh, energy and, and stuff in there and, and it evolves, so that's what for me it's, it's, it's really cool to do, working on these projects, uh, so yeah, this is the updated version. Uh, here you see some of the process uh, pictures, so also the 3D uh, printed. Um, a printed piece, and uh, you see us working in Canada in Jainer House that time. It's with um, ultraviolet with um, with the light, and we have um, um, yeah. We also put the model on very high heels to make her very uh, intimidating. That also helps very much to trigger attention and also interaction from the audience. So this is Lada. She's she's great. She's she's. Super Dardroid model. Do that. Mm, I think that there's a problem with this, which you can see it on the internet if you want to search for it. It's a cool product, so but it gives problems here. <laughs> I think my my MacBook is totally stuffed, so it doesn't uh, doesn't want to work. But yeah, people do crazy stuff. I think I can scroll through it a little bit more. It's in the audience and um, yeah, people roll over their back. And it's not only this, if you also have it in a more cl classy or posh event, people are really doing the things to, yeah, in, 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 in order to interact and to explore the system. So it's funny, it's really an opener, sort of. It's an, an, an um, yeah, as soon as she walks in the room, people or talk about her or interact with her and she just gathers a crowd. So it's... Um, that's cool. Um, that's the team. Unfortunately, they, they, they both moved to Canada, so uh, I'm, I'm alone here in, in Vienna at the moment, so crying my eyes out. They're cuties. Uh, and then it got published in the Wired magazine. It was really cool, because also the, um, one of the companies that I did later on a dress for, uh, Look Solutions, got names. And um, yeah, it's, it's always hard if you, can, if you have sponsors to name them, because you know, most of the people don't want to publish somehow but so that was really they were really happy with that this is so that was a system that i talked about before that uh, their words based on that was an exploration that i did um regarding to i was busy a lot with leds and led and light is for me so um it's too too controlled in a way so i was thinking of ways to explore more things that you can color uh, color, for example, fabrics or, or designs without having it to be too controlled. And what I really like is, for example, if you put a drop of ink in water, the, the, yeah, the dance that it makes in the water, and it's something that you can't really, yeah, can't really capture uh, in a way. And that was, that was interesting for me. And yeah, because my products are based on interaction, I, I try to develop this idea of um, 
yeah, how can you make a dress, yeah, go change in color in a more organic way. So I made a little, little um, a drawing that was in 2008. So this is one of my first projects based on fashion and technology. These are the solenoid valves that I use, uh, Ole Festo. I like them very much. And um, this is, for example, one of the boards that I developed at uh, FITU, Institute for the Instable Media, as uh, part of the, um, uh, an artist in residence in 2010. So here you see the PCB board, you see the, um, uh, the print, uh, the plate. Um, all my projects are mostly coupled to 9 volt batteries or were coupled to 9 volt batteries at a time with a long run. And now I yeah, use other batteries, uh, like ION and LiPo uh, more, um, because they are. Yeah, you can recharge and such. Um, here also you see little test with a with a solenoid valve and a huge as heat sink that I didn't need at the end, but I put it in for yeah, for security. So and that is uh, that got presented at the time at ICEA. It was um, the, the the system is coloring itself. So the, the system is coloring the dresses underneath, and the dresses are treated with chemical. Um, um, yeah, with chemicals. So every time the ink drops on the dresses, it creates another effect, and that was for, my, for me the yeah the, the starting point and also the end position that it had. That all these dresses have an, an really known behavior in a non-controlled way, because the system is um, yeah creating these 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 effects. Um, there was the dripping. So that's yeah that's that's something some explorations that you do. And then it got captured by a stylist in the, in the USA. So we used um, the concept for Britney Spears' video. It was interesting and of course, yeah, it's LA, so it should be more bombastic. So it's huge as pumps and, and uh, paint. So, and uh, yeah, her falling and yeah, it's, it's a sort of uh, concept of expression and um, yeah. That was interesting. Then also uh, for the same stylist, I did um, um, the Super Bowl. I got I was in the Netherlands in 2010, and then I got a call. I was at my mother's place, which is in the countryside. Then I got a call from LA, asking, um, saying, yeah, there, there was uh, this girl calling me that that she's a stylist and that she needs cool stuff for the for the Super Bowl and. Uh, I don't watch that much TV, so I actually didn't know what the Super Bowl was and knew that it was, had to do something with football, so I was like, yeah. And then uh, she told me that it was for the Black Eyed Peas and I knew them from some songs. So that's, that's, I said like, yeah, what's your budget and, and, and what do you want to have? And so we started to talk. So um, so after that I biked to my dad and I told him like, I think, I think maybe I'm gonna do something big. I'm not sure. So it got it got viewed by 112 million people. It was the best viewed Super Bowl. So it was funny in Texas. Um, they wanted, um, yeah, they wanted to have an, 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 an yeah, an, an costume. And um, she, yeah, the stylist told me some of the things that that she wanted. Um, I want to make it more focusing more on a little bit masculine uh, look. So I want to develop a chest piece, um, but yeah, trans translated to uh, yeah. To a girl's version, so that it fits her style. Um, so uh, the chess piece I made in a collaboration with Todd Selman uh, Studios. Uh, he's a great guy. He does a lot with uh, Walt Disney Studios, and um, um, yeah, he has a lot of experience with that. So we uh, we made a 3D model of her body, and we started to sculpt, uh, create the yeah the, the chess piece. Uh, we got sponsored by Swarovski. Mm, so it's a shitload of uh, Swarovski's there, but the good thing about this is that uh, if you're working with LED, it gets really warm, so you need a good heat sink, especially with this kind of LEDs. Uh, but the, um, the Swarovski's were in between, and uh, actually because of the wind blowing through the uh, performance at the Super Bowl, it was cooling the, 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 the LED, so no heat sink, so it was perfect. So Ole Swarovski. So I like you very much. And this is the, um, this is the effect. Uh, so it was yes, it was super bright there. It was insane actually. Uh, here you can see this is full light sort of. It was full light shining in there and it was yeah, in tricky mode. That was the dog. Still have to skip that out. And then uh, I also developed uh, shoes with the electronics stored in there uh, using Luminex because yeah, just to be safe to not be too exper uh, experimental. It's uh, Luminex is an optic fiber, so you light it from one source and it shines through the whole uh, material. So these were the shoes during the fitting. Uh, unfortunately, you didn't saw that at the Super Bowl that much um, because it was too 
Ja, de, de lights at de Super Bowl, nee, they were too strong. Uh, dat was de show itself. So dat was de full uh, costume. En I have a little movie where you can see the, the effect, hopefully. Because it's really small. So here you can see that the effect was really, yeah, well, really well seeable. The, the patches, the, the batteries are stored in the, in the, in the patches, in the shoulder patches. Uh, so she could totally move. She was just bouncing around. I was holding my heart uh, when she did it, but it worked out fine. That's the interesting thing, especially if you have such a huge show, uh, because yeah, you work with electronics and we all know if you work with robotics and such things that mostly, yeah, sometimes it doesn't work, mostly it works the last five minutes. So uh, yeah, I was having a sort of half shock moment, being in, in a shock state um, for uh, yeah, holding my heart that, that, that everything would work. So you were on site? Um, no, for um, for insurance reasons, I couldn't go to the venue like to uh, to Dallas. So I had to watch it in LA with somebody. Uh, I had it was a last moment project, so I couldn't get a cert certificate to to get there um, uh, in the end. So somebody was uh, yeah was there. So I was yeah we were in contact. Like does it work? Does it work? Can you see it? Can you see it on the screen? I can't see. So it was it was just manic. So I don't know. And then it worked, and then I slept. So. Yeah, I slept very, very good for 12 hours, I think. I didn't party, I was just like, so much, yeah. And then I, I got sick of the LEDs, and then uh, I, I thought, I want to do more with the uncontrolled stuff, and um, because you always try to push yourself in, in other ways, so I want to create an uh, address already when I was uh, studying, uh, that's uh, covering the body in smoke. Mm, and um, that's what, uh, what I developed with Adwan Dariba, uh, met, uh, with my collaborator. We actually we studied interaction design at the same time. Uh, when I was do also doing fashion design, um, we, we combined our studies because he got interested in fashion and I got, yeah, my interest was in robotics. So, um, um, yeah, we, we collaborate more often on, uh, on such projects. So it's addressed that uh, this is a prototype that is creating a thick layer of smoke around the body. It's a wearable system, it's wireless, it's just placed on the back and it's 550 gram. Uh, so it's really, um, uh, really, yeah, mm, it's, it's, it's good to wear. So she doesn't have any cables or such. This was the prototype and now I finished uh, the, the new version of the dress. So this was more the, the simple version, leaving more the body, the body and the, the smoke, the dress. And uh, now I work more with yeah, getting control over the smoke with uh, little ventilators, with LEDs to color the smoke and um, yeah, to trigger that reaction more. This is a little movie. It's not edited yet because uh, we did a shoot last weekend. So I just compiled it for this presentation uh, quickly. Um, so from this point on, what I want to do is, uh, yeah, really control the smoke uh, more to get it more in shape. Um, it's now leaded through the dress and the ventilators and the and the yeah the and the the leads in there to color it. So in a way, you want to have it uncontrolled, and now I want from uncontrolled to co to controlled, and uh, yeah, that's, that's that's an interesting process. And um, yeah, I got a lot of yeah, we got a lot of good reactions on this one. And then, that was very smoky. And then we were playing this game and it's called Limbo and it's one of the greatest games ever. Because it's just really simple and the style is really good. I don't know if, if you guys are gamers or if you know this game. Um, it's it's, it's right? huh? Is it a French game? Yeah, it's a French game, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, the style very is cool. so, it was so fascinating. And um, yeah, it was from, um, uh, yeah, it's a French game. It's an um, um, I don't know the, the word for it. Uh, yeah, uh, like uh, like Mario. It's it's not a uh, three-dimensional game. It's just a flat game, and it's this boy that's wandering through this shadow, yeah, shadowscape. And at one point, there's this spider that is yeah trying to yeah to trying to catch him and kill him sort of. And uh, um, yeah, what the, I got really fascinated by the movements that this spider makes. You you can't see that much of the spider, but you know that it's a spider. And you like when a spider would do this, of course, with robots then yeah then it's it's controlled again and yeah if it has more this twitchy feeling uh, then then it becomes this animal so it becomes really animalistic so uh, then we started to explore um, yeah creating these shapes and uh, we made a little movie really we released it with, uh, with Halloween <laughs> so it got a lot of attention um, it was uh, a lot of people wanted to, uh, to cut it for that for that day 
Um, so this is a little shoot what we uh, what we did with it. It has um, yeah mechanic legs. Um, so it's a project with me and Daniel uh, that was here yesterday. Um, and um, yeah, it's it's a system that we developed according to or after an, an yeah sort of spider bot design that he made. And yeah, we want to place it on shoulders. I'm really fascinated with man, so uh, I just want to freak out with them. And we yeah we started to place it on the on the shoulders and try to see what we could do with it. We want to work with, uh, the, yeah, with, uh, with the idea of instinct and also again personal space. So we used again the distances. Um, it has uh, sensors built in there. It's a prototype and uh, as soon as you approach it then it starts to go from the three meter state, so the, the social space it's breathing, uh, to the uh, personal space it starts to crawl and if you're, in the, yeah, if you're too close in the intimate space then it starts to go into these attack modes. Yesterday we had some uh, some problems regarding to the to, to the battery and to the to the connection here, so it started to twitch the other way. It, it was interesting. It was like a dying spider uh, more, but this is the effect that it uh, should do. Again, it's not edited movie because we shot it last uh, last weekend, and um, this is the full the full effect. So it's yeah. All these things are explorations. Like, well, what what can you do with combining technology on the body, placing sensors there, monitoring the body, or seeking for any interaction or connection with audience or with a surroundings or with a space, and um, and so on. So some are like yeah. What I do is stage wear related, more effect based, or it's a performative wearable. What I like to uh, call this, uh, for example. And these are. Um, yeah, these are mostly starting points of, 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 of other things. And again, what I really like is that you have this thing and yeah, uh, what what it is, like uh, it, it gets updated and upgraded like like yeah, technology uh, does. And that is what really the first it's form from yeah, fashion and, and any kind of that for me. Uh, that's yeah, it just becomes this uh, sort of little child or a little animal of you and, and, and you can develop it. That's what I really like about um, yeah, robotics and, and, and working with these, yeah, these structures and systems. And um, I want to show a little bit, this is Techno Central, that's an exhibition that I curated um, the last few months on, um, on the Museum Scrutier. And that's actually involving a lot of, um, yeah, of the projects that I'm also busy with, also with other artists from my field. And we had an artist in residency program in where, uh, from Quartier 21, in where an artist got, um, in where I um, yeah, combined an Austrian artist, like a fashion designer, with an engineer from the Netherlands or the other way around. Uh, so we had uh, 10 artists at the uh, Museums Quartier in Vienna that were developing projects from a different topic so we yeah we really started to focus about this topic of techno central and what it is and what we can make with it and uh, the topic is uh, electronic couture of the exhibition so we had two space we had a white space uh, that's more an enlightened space and then we had a dark space so the artist chose okay i, I developed for the dark space with uh, leds and with a more darker style or for the white space which is more enlightened and more uh, in a poetic way um, um, yeah, thinking of, of, of ways of light and enlightenment or interaction. So um, these are 3D printed shoes of Pauline van Dongen. She's a great artist from the Netherlands and um, uh, yeah, it was a way of yeah, showing the visitor that, that, that yeah, you can, uh, yeah, shoes shouldn't be produced in traditional ways, but yeah, these, these can be printed, which is a really cool technique and available. And yeah, what Magnus says, uh, Vienna is a huge culture of 3D printers and pretty, yeah, 3D printing, um, yeah, people who are exp exploring with it and um, yeah, really interesting stuff. Uh, this is a dress made by Melissa Coleman and Leonie Smelt and um, uh, they work with an interface so as soon as you put uh, your hand on the interface it starts to work so it gives a, f a signal to the system and as soon as um, um, you have your, your hand on the interface and, and if you talk to the dress and you're lying uh, it's detecting this through a little mic uh, yeah, micro microphone in the dress and the system on the back so it gives a feedback shock to the hand again so um, it was an exploration of yeah what you can do according to um, mm, uh, yeah the, the, the more tactile possibilities of uh, yeah of interfaces and combination to uh, yeah, to 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 the design. 
It was well done mm -hmm. and it's really cool. It was really cool for the, yeah, for the visitors to explore. All the designs in the exhibition had or interfaces or were interactive. So yeah, the, the visitors really could explore the, the designs. This is a dress that uh, starts to wiggle as soon as you get it, uh, give it attention. It has two uh, huge uh, servo motors in the, in the side, so it starts to make this little movement. And especially girls really like this, so they, yeah, they just explore that. And it's made by Django Steinbacher, uh, who's a non-technical, uh, yeah, I coupled him to uh, Ricardo Nascimento, uh, who's a great um, artist and interaction designer, and they, uh, they made, this, uh, made this dress. So that's the interface, you, yeah, you put it, um, you take it off and it starts to, uh, to react. This is body speaker by Karina van Heck, and um, uh, she's uh, measuring, uh, she's capturing uh, different sounds from the body, like the, the neck, the, the, uh, yeah, the, um, the, yeah, the neck part, um, your Artery. voice sort of. Yeah. Or the larynx. Yeah, yeah, larynx, I think it's called. Yeah. yeah. And uh, the heartbeat and the tummy sounds, and then she has this box here uh, next to her um, on the hips, and she can um, yeah, remix her own body sounds, which uh, sounds really cool and the Vista can also do that through an additional interface that's uh, part from the Pretty Smart Textiles uh, exhibition that Technocentry was hosting there and it's really yeah interesting exploration of, of this artist of um, yeah, using body sounds and uh, producing your own uh, yeah, your, your own uh, mixture with it because yeah it's, it's really personal so the sounds that you hear really come from your body and, and, and uh, it's really um, intriguing in a way uh, so yeah, the whole exhibition was interactive and um, also yeah, the artists were working there so it was really, uh, really cool, yeah, a few months that, that, that happened there. Uh, this is Fair Fluid that Bokemi Doringer um, exper um, experimented with. It's a magnetic, um, uh, yeah, magnet-based ink, so if you magnetize it, then it wants to jump out of its uh, structure. So he made an installation based on this. He wants to make it wearable, uh, but it didn't uh, work out because of time uh, at the end, so it became a, a gorgeous sculpture uh, in collaboration with Rein um, Volenga uh, from the Netherlands. He's living in Berlin and he made a sculpture. And this was uh, at the opening. Um, Bart has been invited. Um, he's interested in yeah, having the body as a, a platform for exploration and using different techniques to transform and morph the body into different situations. So uh, he made a sort of an, a slime and, and yeah, maybe you know that as a child you, you can yeah, make this slime yourself so he just produced tons of it and yeah, he's throwing it over over model but uh, it gives this really nice sort of, dip, yeah, sort of still life uh, yeah, if, the, if, the, if the model is sitting there it's totally quiet and they were like at the opening there were 2000 visitors um, um, and yeah, everybody was just yeah, standing there looking at this for 20 minutes and as it was dripping it had a certain smell like blueberries uh, so it was really interesting and it left a big stain in the, in the exhibition but we left it in because it was perfect. Huh? Oh yes, and um, here you can see the um, a little a tube. Oh, so I he's, see. he's uh, still uh, yeah, you can still uh, you can still be. So and um, we caught uh, over thirty thousand visitors at the end, so it was really successful. And um, actually yesterday I got an email from uh, Gunther, uh, that is my uh, partner with exhibition. Uh, Gunther is from uh, Monochrome. Um, um, and Monochrome is an um, yeah. An, an, an institute uh, based in the in the museums quartier in Vienna. Uh, so we organized uh, the the exhibition together. And yesterday I got an email in the evening when I got back into the hotel that uh, the catalogus is now uh, printed. So he has a shitload. He has like thousands of catalogues. So if I come back to Vienna, I have a really really nice surprise that I look forward to. And uh, I think it's available on Amazon. I need to check that out. And uh, so you can, yeah see what happened there in the museum's quartier. And I think I talked a lot and I'm, people know that I talk very fast, so I hope that you guys could follow it. And uh, yeah, that was it. <laughs>How did you make the fluorescent gin and tonic? What? Oh, it's, um, yeah, it, it was just an, an ultraviolet uh, LED. It was uh -huh. inside, so it was coloring. If it's in the system, it was uh, coloring the, uh, yeah, the, the gin and tonic. Somehow it, it goes really well. Uh, uh, yeah, the, the, the combination of gin and tonic with a, with a light. So, uh -huh. yeah, it's just an extra, uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, no, um, actually, I didn't. Uh, I didn't discover it. Uh, Dan from Studio Rooschuit is an an, an an laboratory for interactive, um, yeah, interactive design. He caught. Uh, he was in, I think, in Russland, and um, uh, it's really interesting as artists to go to co certain companies because you, yeah, you go in and and they, yeah, what you want to do is 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 look into their their trash, the things that they have unused, and then uh, yeah, he found this in the corner, laying around, like what's that? And they said like, um, uh, it's something uh, we made it, but yeah, this and that, and then he started to yeah develop it more with the studio Roosgarde, and then yeah we uh, I I got in to yeah to design and to to play and uh, make a system for this um, yeah this material. So that was actually material that was a sort of yeah more waste, and then you cut it from the trash can from them, and then you start to develop it because for for them yeah they make security glass, so yeah for them it's really not not interesting to make it uh, fragile and flexible in a way. So uh, yeah, and then. Yeah, so some, some classic ways of dumpster diving is yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. useful materials. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but it's it's yeah it's interesting. It's it's only um, um, yeah. What I notice is there are so many companies interested in this, and that they or that they yeah, that you get emails like hey explore experiment with this material. Or I'm gonna send you stuff, and for them it's or. And sometimes not even the development. If they can put in their newsletter like, "Hey guys, we're into fashion," then that's already an, an, an interesting thing for them to just have, uh, yeah, have this uh, have this going on. And then, uh, yeah, I got a lot of collaborations with 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 companies that are actually now developing things that that were yeah in their trash, and now they know that yeah there that there are people interested in that what they didn't know before. So, um, <coughs> yeah, it's interesting how that works. You always need to from some other side to get yeah, 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 yeah. But I think that's also the the key for yeah for for such projects. Like also, what I'm yeah, busy with, it's not it's not fashion, it's not interaction design, not robotics or science or like it's it's combination, and that's gonna happen mm, yeah more often that that these fields get scattered sort of, and that yeah people are collaborating, working to together, and yeah companies and techno uh, technological firms and such they uh, yeah they start to recognize that and then. Yeah. Do you design so, for male models as well, or is it mostly females? Yeah, the, this the, um, the spider dress was the first exploration that uh, can actually uh, it's a dress, but it can also the um, the system can be detached and uh, like my, because I, I work with Daniel and he was also yeah he also liked to explore that <laughs> maybe a little bit more so he could also uh, also wear it and um, yeah the the systems that uh, that uh, develop now are more. Um, Detachable, sort of. So, for example, this is yeah for uh, for yeah boys. This can also be cool to have these spider <laughs> legs yeah going on there. But mostly if it's yeah feminine, like a boy doesn't want to have a smoke dress. But <laughs> I have a lot of a shitload of emails in my email like, hey, I want to have that sort of. And no boy, so there's not really a market for this. But now, uh, yeah, since the um, spider dress got mediated, I also get a lot of people uh, through Facebook and through everywhere like, oh, that's interesting, like. Uh, but uh, I think yeah, boys are, are yeah yeah and, uh, less yeah it's, it's it's less expressive. So it's a question like yeah, do you want to have that in, in a way? Females are, are displaced in a, yeah more well, I was wondering displaying if it's more and of an aesthetic choice or it's just a, kind of just by your legacy of, of being in the fashion mm -hmm. industry and working with women models yeah. mostly. No, I'm 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 um, I'm, mm, I'm how do you say? My practice is girls' clothing, sort of. Oh, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, the first, yeah, what I say, uh, I, I like to explore that. But it should be having a sort of yeah, yeah, manly touch to it to to make it work, you know. But I think yeah, spider is ah, a lot of yeah. Now I got a lot of requests from from, from that side as well. So yeah. Great work. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> and uh, yeah. What was this the smoke material? I was wondering. I mean, is it like a gas or is it actual smoke? Or uh, it's um, yeah, it's uh, it's actually smoke. It's an open weave and uh, an open woven smoke um, uh, smoke system. Um, like um, yeah, it's really um, it's really really compact. What I say, it's in total uh, the system is. 500, 500 gram, because mm -hmm. we experienced with uh, with other stuff uh, before, also with dry ice, yeah. and we uh, we made a system uh, with uh, with drops falling into the dry ice, 
and uh, like and then yeah creating the that was really pretty because I involved like pseudomorphs the dripping dress with with the system heavy yeah of the ice. yeah um, it was was not that heavy that was not a problem but the problem was the chemical reaction uh, uh, we did a photo shoot it was all fine like on model and on the door it was all fine and then uh, we did a photo shoot and then the consumption of light uh, Scattered with the uh, with the dry ice and the chemical reaction, so the model fainted. So that was that was too experimental. <laughs> so uh, Lack and of so, oxygen. Oh yeah. <laughs> so uh, we now we uh, we yeah, the models also sign a, a model release oh, yeah. and then uh, yeah for for being yeah. It's, uh, it's an, the model agencies are sometimes not really happy with me, but <laughs> hazard pay. Huh? Hazard pay. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and, and these are like I also do other things. Like uh, I also do other stuff and, and lecturing and more commercial uh, approach. But yeah, what I showed here now was more based on the robotic uh, approach because of the yeah by the festival. Like a lot of companies come up to me uh, with uh, with these huge things, and uh, they have this cool idea and with wearable electronics. And I was just yeah talking to uh, to Magnus about it, and then uh, they have this system, and it's like an 80s, like from the 80s, uh, like a, a sort of spacesuit, and they, they want to have people just walking around and do their thing like um, live streaming devices that are on the body and then you have these huge ass things that you can develop with uh, with a little little microcontroller and a connection and so uh, it's, it's really interesting what kind of um, yeah, requests come in from a lot of sites like um, have you ever um, done a piece where there's interactivity between two systems like like one model is wearing something <laughs> that you've created and another model is wearing something you've created and there's interaction between them in yeah. systematically? Yeah, um, I liked, uh, it was actually my first project in 2007, it was uh, called Fragilis, and I worked a lot with, um, um, yeah, I come, I come from a fashion background, and I started to, um, I wanted to do something different, so I thought it was more performative, so I started in theater, making uh, models move and, and, and such things, so like making the dress move, and then I was like, that's not really it, and then I started to uh, work with like little servo motors, so my first project was two girls, standing next to each other with a sort of Scandinavian look um, because I like to have blonde models because it looks like a sort of white canvas situation so I had two models standing there and they, uh, as soon as they complete each other so they close the circuit uh, like wirelessly and then they, um, yeah, they started to react so uh, but that's, um, yeah, somehow I like to explore more um, regarding to design design or um, I like to explore more what, yeah, how you can connect the, 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 the body to the monster, to the, the body to the system, or the system to the audience, and the, the or, yeah, so, yeah, but that, that can be helpful. <laughs> Did you play with some brainwaves? For? Brain waves. Brain waves. Ah, okay. Uh, no, I was interested in the emotive, that's an, um, um, yeah, an, an um, uh, brain scan, but uh, but what I found out is that um, that uh, yeah, if you use with it, I would like to do more with emotions. And uh, you, for example, with the brain, you can capture um, you can capture states, but you can't uh, capture the, the feelings or the emotions that a person has. But there's a device called Plux. It's only ten thousand euro, and I'm I'm backing the company to give me one. But it's um, a wireless bio signal uh, device. Um, so what it does, it's connecting the brain uh, to the the pH digits of your skin to your heartbeat and uh, it has the whole system going on, so it doesn't only um, um, yeah can 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 monitor um, a certain states, but it can also really make a more complex interaction. Because, uh, for example, the brain scans you can you really have to what I know you really have to train them like emotive. You have to train your scan to do the thing that you want it to do, sort yes, of. And uh, I mean, exactly what does it mean? Huh? Because if you are if you are uh, scanning only emotions or some some body signals. Mm -hmm. It's not really what the people is thinking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and uh, yeah, if, before, if but you like... Learn something, you know that this is exactly the, the same signal. Yeah, yeah, it, it needs to be a more complex system. You, you can't yeah. only use your brain uh, for it that. It will be more fun. Huh? It will be more fun. With, with the brain only, yes. you mean? Oh, yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> then you have to have this training, which is kind of fitting the purpose of... Uh, you will have your own personal suit? Learn to your body. <laughs> it's kind of freaky, no? Yes, but if you want to work with the emotions, if 
uh, yeah, fear is the same as uh, being sad, and that, that's what you have with brain. It, it can't be fear if you're if you're in fear or if you're sad. And um, for example, if you have um, with this system flux, uh, you have yeah, you get more sweaty, and the sweat you can uh, you can get the data from the from your pH digits. And yeah, if you have a more complex system, then you can really capture the emotions instead of having to train your brain or your brain machine to. Uh, so yeah. Also, you can train your suit so that uh, you can predict that, for example, you are happy, but mm -hmm. in actual you are not happy because you know how the suit is reacting. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> you know, if you train your suit to your uh, brain waves, mm -hmm. you cannot fool fool this this system. Mm -hmm. if, if the this system knows that this exactly uh, wave is that you are sad or you are happy, yeah. you cannot fool. It's yeah, but that's interesting because, um, like, uh, research is a lot of research is happening regarding to to emotions and feelings, and um, also regarding to personal space. People get more overwhelmed, so people go of, of more and more away from their feelings. So, in a way, that's cool. A uh, cool coupling back that your system can explain you more about you than you can do to yourself.